Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Proverbs 18.21 Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Our words, when we speak, we either speak words of death or of life. And that which is of a sinful nature and selfishness, that are, those are the words of a decrepit state that will continue to put us in a state of de uh, declining into that which is of the wicked and towards ultimately that which is damning and which is death. But when we speak words of life, when we speak words from God's word, those are the words that edify man and help them to understand what life is all about. When we speak God's word, and we can only speak God's word if we know God's word, and the only way we can know God's word if it is, is if we spend time in God's word. And likewise, the only way we can know God is first through belief that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, that he died on the cross 2,000 plus years ago for our sins and resurrected on the third day, and we repent of our sins. When we do this, we can then come to enter into the faith, into a living relationship with God Almighty, and we can begin to know him. And then how do we know what God wants from us, and how do we know God more? Well, we have to spend time with him, and this is through cultivating a relationship with the Holy Spirit within us that we receive through belief and repentance, and also uh, having the Holy Spirit sharing his wisdom, his thoughts, and the Father's thoughts, and the Father's will, and helping guide us into that path. But with our words, the Holy Spirit can be the one to speak words that edify and are life. And the Word of God is life-giving. The Word of God reveals truth. The Word of God shows what is good and what is evil. The Word of God shows the way that man and woman should walk in. The Word of God has all the answers. Despite uh, popular belief, the Word of God has all answers to all the deep questions of life. Obviously, this was written, uh, depending on your source, I think it took about roughly a thousand years for the entire scriptures to be written, but it has one main message, and that main message is the message of Jesus Christ. And obviously the Bible doesn't have, uh, you know, it doesn't solve the uh, quantum theory or, or quantum mechanics. It doesn't uh, tell us how to repair a car, that sort of thing. But it has all the answers and all we need for that which uh, is most important. Because the most important things in this life are knowing God, it's understanding morality, it's understanding where we came from, where we're going, what the two destinations are, why they are as they are, and why we have been made, and, and how each person has intrinsic value. And so when we speak the word to other people, when we begin to know God more and more with each given day, we're going to be more prone to giving words of life and words that are encouraging. And Zig Ziglar once said, he said, how do you know if a man needs encouragement? Simply by the standpoint if he is breathing. Because the reality is all of us need encouragement. We all need encouragement. We all desire encouragement. And encouragement helps us along. And so if we're constantly speaking words, we're constantly giving in to the enemy's attacks within our minds or through certain uh, family instances or environments or upbringings where we have developed these neurological pathways that continue to keep us in a certain state of anxiety, depression, fear, uh, uh, lustful thinking, just anything of that sort, we need to pray that God would heal that and that he would uh, work on those neurological pathways because there is something called neuroplasticity which is our brain's ability to rewire and form new neurological pathways. And so uh, if we give into these states by which we were brought up and which used to rule us in the past and we keep going back and believing those thoughts and believing the thoughts of the enemy and believing the thoughts of the world and believing the thoughts of what our family's perception thinks of what we should do and that we should be 
married by a certain point in time and that we should do this particular work and that we shouldn't pursue these dreams and visions that we believe God has given us. When we let other people rule and dictate us, we are going to then start speaking words of death to ourselves and the words of death are going to squander the purpose that God has for us and what God desires to do in and through us and through our life because we are believing that which is contrary to God or we are believing that which does not support what God has spoken. Because God's voice, he speaks in many different ways to many different people. And not everyone's going to hear his voice in the same way unless they're obviously reading God's word. And, and it's all done obviously by the Holy Spirit. But what I mean is no one is going to receive the same words of insight, the same vision that, one, that God has for that person's life. And that is why we are a body. Okay? All of us are we're not the same thing. I mean, a, 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 a band made up of just tubas or just trombones would be pre pretty boring. I mean, yeah, you can make some good uh, sounds and music through that, but we want variety. When a whole orchestra comes, when, we, when you got piano, trombone, trumpet, uh, tuba, flute, saxophone, when you got all that and it's combining drums, it's a masterpiece. It's wonderful so long as everything is working accordingly and following the path and the plan and the notes on the sheet and likewise so is the body of christ and that's why we are all different none of us are alike we all have different gifts and talents and god speaks to us differently he gives us different visions and purposes and dreams because we are to work together as a body as as unified and desiring to help each other, encourage each other, speak life to each other, but then also to receive that same thing from each other and not be overly ambitious and overly competitive trying to trying to weigh one another uh, each other down and trying to compete and have more followers or whatever it is. We are to come together because when we come together that is God's plan for all his people to uh, unite as one all races both eth uh, all ethnicities both genders he wants everyone of every size and height and weight that believes in him and he also wants those who don't believe him to come believe in him but those who believe in him he wants us all to work together and to speak life to others in this world whether they're believers or unbelievers whether they are the righteous or they are the wicked god desires that None should perish, but all would come to genuine repentance, Second Peter 3, 9. And so we need to work on speaking life out and not allowing uh, words and thoughts to rule us that are negative because when we start speaking those out, we'll start believing them, and then we're going to get in a continuous cycle of unproductivity. We need to get out of that, and we need to start spending time with God, reading His Word, getting to know him, speaking words of encouragement, speaking words of life, and then watching the Holy Spirit move upon what we say and what we are doing and what we are thinking. So may we uh, speak life in order that we may eat of its fruits, and may we not speak death lest we eat of its fruits, which leads down a catastrophic life and one that does not fulfill God's will but does what is contrary to him. Because this life is about knowing God, and God is truth and life. And if we continue to speak that out, the enemy hates truth, he's going to flee, and the more we speak truth, the more we're going to work on our brain and our neurological pathways, and God's word is going to begin to sink in, and it's going to start to dominate and rule our mind more, so that the lustful thoughts, the bad thinking, the negative, negativity, the fear, the anxiety, the sin that used to dominate us will be deflected, reverted, and cast out so long as we are desiring to know God, know his word more, and allowing it to set in, not only within our soul, not only within our heart, but also within our mind, and then proceeding out of our mouth.